you too what's good send you back at it again with another video so today we're talking about the top five loadouts in warzone now these are my top five go-to loadouts the ones that i've made custom that i've updated over time and i'm telling you right now that from the feedback that i've received from most of you who have used these builds these are definitely the most broken now i don't want to say the most broken builds but yeah, they, they do a little something in the war zone. You know, they're supposed... When I make these builds, I make them so that they're off meta, but their own meta. You know, I, I like to make builds that three or 4,000 YouTubers don't put up, but will easily outperform those builds. And today, I bring you my top five go-to. Now, starting off with number five, we have the Growl 556 with the crossbow overkill, running double time, shrapnel, C4 for the lethal and a heartbeat sensor for the tactical. Typically I'd have some gameplay while I'm talking about the pros and cons about the weapon so you guys know exactly what to expect. But when I made the change to my new setup, all my gameplay was left behind and I don't have any copies of it so I'm just going to give you the pros and cons and then we'll move on to the next part of the top 5. Now going into it with the Growl 556, we're running the mono suppressor with the Nexus Burl, the Commando Foregrip, the 50 round mags and the tack laser. The main issue that I have with the Growl 556 is that it's highly overused and it's not because the weapon is overpowered in any way, it's just because it's very easy to use due to its very low recoil and its damage range. That's, that's all it really is. It doesn't have super high damage, it doesn't have a super high headshot multiplier, it, you know, it doesn't knock people out of their boots or ragdoll them across the map, you know, it doesn't flinch people to the point where they're looking at Saturn literally the only reason why the Growl 556 is so overused is because a lot of people are new to Warzone and even existing players that are you know playing modern warfare like having no recoil weapons just like me I like having no recoil weapons now due to that being a thing the Growl 550, uh, 556 is highly overused because of its very low recoil and its five shot kill consistent damage range so, to build on the weaknesses of the Growl 556, which is literally just its idle sway and its movement speed penalty when you run a high magazine, I slapped on the Commando Foregrip and 50 round mags because 50 round mags doesn't give you as much as a movement speed debuff penalty as you get for running the 60 round mags. And with 50 round mags, you should be able to down somebody pretty quickly and deal with them instantaneously. With the Commando Foregrip, it pretty much deletes your side to side horizontal recoil and the idle sway making this thing a straight laser beam and even though I like the Archangel Barrel a lot better the Nexus has better iron sights for longer ranges so considering the very very long ranges that you could be fighting people at inside of Warzone I went with the Nexus Barrel instead of the Archangel Barrel but you're more than welcome to run the Archangel Barrel because even I run the Archangel Barrel over the Nexus I just wanted to make the build as easy as possible to use for some of you guys so we have the Nexus Barrel right here now the Tac Laser I run specifically because of the ADSB buff typically I'd run Stippled Grip Tape or the Growl's version of Stippled Grip Tape but when you run Stippled Grip Tape you typically get a nerf to your control or your accuracy and seeing as this thing is a laser beam already adding the tack laser just seemed like the best thing to do and after a couple of games playing with it having that ADS speed buff and then the recoil stabilization even further disabling the idle sway on this weapon the follow-up shots were I mean they were so consistent and it's gotten to the point where sometimes I'll be playing with the growl even in multiplayer and I'll look at myself while I'm shooting and I'm like bro it's almost like having aimbot it's not even fair so this is definitely the best growl setup right now and pairing it with this crossbow is what really gives it the oomph see the crossbow is highly slept on once you learn how to get your trajectory down and calculate how much you need to basically aim up in order to arc these bolts to land near or into a target the crossbow then automatically becomes the best weapon inside of warzone because it is in fact the only weapon that can get a one shot to the chest and down somebody or kill them after they've already downed them like just let that sink in for a second if i'm running an hdr or an ax50 i can sit here and headshot somebody all day and down them but i have to follow up with either one to four shots because they might be trying to self-revive themselves and if they get behind cover then i can't follow up with those shots to really eliminate them 
The crossbow is the only thing in the game where I can down somebody with a body shot or down them with a body shot and the explosion after they're down will eliminate them, eliminate them, making it so that I don't have to do all the extra work of running into a building to find out where they're camping while they're sitting in corners with deployable covers and launching C4 or laying on the stairs, you know. So don't sleep on the crossbow. Do not do it. I'm telling you right now. It's pro I've I've been saying for the longest that the crossbow is better than the sniper. It just takes a lot of skill to use. But this thing is not only good up close, it's really good at range too. And that's what makes it so good. You don't have to stick a monolithic suppressor on it to have sound suppression. You don't have to stick a thermal on it. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. You don't have to sit over here and worry about people being able to hear you shooting this thing from across the map because it already is an arrow. You can't hear this thing from across the map. You don't have to worry about people being able to detect where the shot is coming from. Because like I said, it's an arrow. The only person who's going to know where the shot came from is the person who got hit. And if the person who got hit had two plates or less, the second the crossbow hits them and the body is going to down them and the explosive tip from the fury bolts are going to kill them, sending them straight to the gulag. Express. One way ticket. They're not coming back. So definitely, the growl with the crossbow is my number five go-to setup. I use this when I just want to start laser beaming people and I have to be a utility tool for the team making sure that we get shots off, making sure that we get those quick picks, making sure that the person who's trying to run away and get to a respawn station can't do that. Now, also I run shrapnel. Shrapnel is basically the new best perk for the third tier because a lot of people are running around in two vehicles and I like to call it the convoy method because they'll sit over here and they'll grab a Jeep and then start driving across the map with one person and then the entire rest of the team will be rolling up in the second Jeep. Running shrapnel makes it so that when I pick up a loadout, I don't have to look for an extra C4 in Warzone, making it so that I automatically have two C4. But the real gem about running shrapnel is that a lot of people are still kind of coming into Warzone's rotation. A lot of people are still picking up Modern Warfare. They're still, you know, learning about the game. So a lot of people have no idea that shrapnel actually gives the targets that you damage a 10% or well, a 10 second healing debuff. Meaning that if you were to shoot me with a C4 and you get me about halfway, right? But you're unable to finish the kill. Even though I'm running away, I have to wait 10 seconds to sit there and get my health back. Meaning that within that 10 second window of you chasing me down, you don't have to do much to follow up for that kill. And even if I have armor and I start shooting back, you're still going to win that gunfight because my health never came back. So it's not a fair gunfight anymore. I'm constantly at a disadvantage because I have to wait an entire 10 seconds for me to get my healing back. And it's a reoccurring effect. So if you hit me with one C4 and the 10 seconds is up, you crack me with another one and I don't have armor plates, I'm stuck here half health for the next 10 seconds. So that's something that a lot of people don't know, and it's something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. A lot of people are so used to getting hit, running away and getting their health back, that when you run up on them, they don't expect to die so fast because their health didn't come back. So definitely don't sleep on shrapnel, don't sleep on overkill with the crossbow. This is definitely my number five go-to. Now, coming in at number four, we have the SA-87, and uh, I'ma let you know right now, like I said in my last one, this is exactly what the SCAR wants to be on a good day. This thing is ridiculous. The only reason that it's actually coming in at number four is because at long range, it's not ideal. Close to mid range, yeah, you're gonna put somebody to sleep. It's a six shot kill, a six shot kill. And the headshot multiplier damage is actually high enough where you can effectively get a five shot. Now, on the SA-87 build, we're running the mono suppressor, with the TAC laser, 60 round mags, the Cronin LP945 mini reflex, and the SA87 ultralight hollow. Now, this weapon is closer to an auto rifle than an LMG, and because of the high damage that this weapon has, they actually only shipped it with, I believe, 25 rounds in the magazine. So, tossing on the 60 round mags and the Cronin LP945 mini reflex makes this weapon incredibly easy to use you have high ammo capacity and you're able to down somebody within six shots six shots it's ridiculous man I, like i can't even express how strong this weapon is from close to mid range you literally cannot lose a gunfight unless you just can't aim that that's all it really is unless they either get the jump on you or you can't aim you won't lose that gunfight 
A six shot kill in Warzone is like having luxury, especially when targets are on the move, targets are hitting their armor, so definitely do not sleep on this weapon. Now, as backup, you guys already know, we're running the custom version of the Akimbo Renettis. Now, on the Akimbo Renetti, we have the MK3 Burst Mod with the lightweight trigger, 27 round mags, a 5 milliwatt laser this time, and Akimbo to double up on the lethality of the single Renetti. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people do not know about the Renetti. The Renetti actually deals 72 damage to the head as a headshot, and multiplayer and it's out of Warzone. You only have 250 health points inside of Warzone. You have the base 100 health, and then you get 150 from the three armor plates. You can literally down somebody in one burst and then sit there and kill them in one burst. That's how crazy it is. It literally makes no sense. At all. At all. Makes zero sense. So, being able to sit here and down somebody within a, one burst and then one bursting them to the head again is ridiculous. Now that's just running the single Renetti. You're running these things akimbo. So if you're sitting over here aiming at the head while akimbo, that's 72 times 6. You're killing them. <laughs> that's it. If you're in solos, they're not coming back. They're going straight to the gulag on an express ticket and they're not coming back. Now, what a lot of people do not realize is that the Renetti is actually a lot better at range than a lot of people tend to think. I would recommend, you know, just popping shots at range but if you want to you can and you'll probably mow somebody pretty quickly now moving on to number three this thing is a laser beam it's a straight up laser beam we have the windbreaker custom version of the m13 now this is pretty much secretly what i go to when i'm not using my number one setup because I'm a straight laser beam with this weapon. A lot of you already know that. We're running the mono suppressor with the Tempest Marksman Barrel, the TAC Laser with the 60 round mags, and the M13 Skeleton Stock. This is probably the only weapon in the game where I will run 60 uh, round mags and not really have to worry about the movement speed penalty because the ABS speed on this thing is still fast enough where I can get shots up and follow up consistently. And the fire rate is high enough with the very, very non existent recoil. So where you can beam somebody at long range and they won't even know what happened. Now, because of you know, because I'm running the Tempest Marksman Barrel, I have increased bullet velocity. So if that target is on the move, then it's gonna be a lot easier when leading shots for those shots to run into the target. I won't have to lead as much because I have extra bullet velocity. So I can typically aim maybe a meter or two in front of the target and just melt them like that. If they're directly in front of me and they're not strafing side to side or maybe they're mounted on the tree or trying to sit in a corner or maybe they're running right at me, they're toast. They are toast. Getting headshots with this thing is scary. Like it's to the point where you will shoot somebody with this thing and you down them so quick with headshots that you scare yourself. You know, or you just, you hit them with a quick woo because you don't understand why this thing melted them like that, but you're glad that it did. And with the high magazine capacity on this thing, you could easily down three members or four members of a squad in one single magazine and then reload and kill them all. Like I said, express tickets to the gulag. We're handing them out all day. It is unbelievable how strong this M13 is. And it's actually, I'm baffled that a lot of people don't use it. I run into more growls, like I said, because of how easy the growl is to use. And I was expecting to run into a lot of M13s. But... A lot of people aren't using the M13, they're going straight for the growl because, you know, it's highly popular within the pros community. A lot of people use it within Warzone. Oh boy. <clears throat> and because of the ease of use with the growl having, you know, very easy iron sights, I think that's what really sets the M13 apart from the growl, is the iron sights. A lot of people don't like the iron sights on the M13, so they stick a red dot. And if you use this build, but you like having... The ease of use with the iron sights then just take the tack laser off and stick on a gi mini reflex or a cronin mini reflex you'll be just fine and i can guarantee you that after using this thing you'll see how strong the m13 really is it's so much better than the growl the only real reason why everybody uses the growl like i said is because it has no recoil and the damage range is consistent that's really all it is there's no high damage the fire rate's real slow you can still lose 1v1s of close 
while using the growl. You can't lose a 1v1 up close while using the M13 unless, like the SA87, you just can't aim. So, as always, we have the Catharsis custom version of the Renetti's Akimbo, Double Time, Hardline, and Shrapnel, C4 for the Lethal, and a Heartbeat Sensor for the Tactical. Now, moving on to number two. Here is where it gets just ridiculous. This right here is the most obnoxious build that you will see from me. Like, bro, it makes no sense. So, number two, we have the vile custom version of the Bruin MK9 LMG. Now, this thing, like the SA87, is more of an assault rifle than it is an LMG. Being able to toss on the detachable 60 round mags, reducing that high ammo capacity from 150 down to 60, allows us to have an increased movement speed, but also allows us to still have enough ammo in the magazine to deal with squads, which is really why you only put 60 round mags on ARs, because they don't have a high magazine capacity, but they do have the bonuses of having the high mobility, the pretty decent ranges, the recoil control and everything. When this thing shipped, not only does it have the same ease of use as the Growl, but since it's an LMG, it has better damage ranges, it has better damage values, and since I can decrease the magazine down to 60 rounds per magazine, I'm able to get the mobility that I would typically receive with an AR or a very, very heavy kitted SMG. And then obviously you can see the rest of the setup. We're running the mono suppressor with the XRK Horizon 23 inch barrel, the TAC laser for that ADS speed, and the skeleton stock. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the iron sights on this thing are probably the easiest that I've ever used. <clears throat> and as you can see here on the stat sheet, there's nothing but green. Nothing but green. It just increases all over the place. You literally cannot go wrong with this. You melt one person, you move to the next one, you move to the next one, you move to the next one. You can kill five to six people within this one magazine. I've done it. And then you just move on. It's unbelievable how strong this weapon is, yet it's still balanced because it's an LMG, so you still have that movement speed penalty. It's crazy. Literally, when this weapon came out, I said that if you wanted a growl but in an LMG, then this is exactly what you want. And I still stand by that statement today. This is literally the growl 556 in LMG form. Everything you wanted is everything you wanted to be. Couldn't get any better than this. Now, as a backup, this thing right here, if you guys didn't see my previous video, there's a card right here so you can, you know, go ahead and check it out. This thing right here is stupid. It, it literally makes no sense, and I'm going to explain the entire build right now. So right now we have the Force Attack Marauder with the VOK SAR barrel. Now, those two attachments combined tighten the pellet spread so much that you don't need to have a hip fire extension by running the 1 milliwatt laser or the 5 milliwatt laser meaning that people don't even know you're coming around the corner with this shotgun. Now, the bread and butter of this build is the Dragon's Breath rounds. The exceptional fire rate, yet still featuring the exact same damage as the Model 680, allows you to really pump out damage a lot faster than you can with the 680. Pair that with the high mobility, the fact that this thing is mag-fed instead of slug-fed, this thing is ridiculous. You literally can down somebody within one burst up close and then shoot them in the head and they're done. So, like I said before, sending them straight to the gulag with express train tickets. They are not coming back. It's like EPS. Express shipping. They get there the next day and they just they never leave. So, we have frangible wounding and I'm guessing you're wondering why in the world I'm even running frangible wounding. Well, I'm going to explain it to you right now. The Dragon's Breath rounds basically have a thermite effect to it, so regardless of if they have shields or if they're running EOD or maybe they're behind a wall, you can pepper spray people with the Dragon's Breath rounds, and if you don't kill them, the burning damage will obviously get to their health. Let's say that the Dragon's Breath ammunition damages their health. Well, the second that the ammunition stops burning, frangible wounding kicks in, meaning that they cannot heal for the next 10 seconds. If they heal, and you spray them with this thing again, they can't heal for another 10 seconds. Nobody in Warzone runs stem, making this the most obnoxious thing inside of Warzone, because this thing, you either kill them on contact, or you stop them from healing completely. And since it is a shotgun with pellet spread, 
you can in fact hit multiple targets with this thing. So if you burn armor off of multiple targets and damage all of your health, you can sit here and do the wombo combo where you stop them from healing and then blast them with a C4. Because you all know the issues with C4. Sometimes you shoot somebody, you try to follow up with a C4 because they ran into a building, but they started to heal. Well, if you're running friends with a wounding, they can't heal after you shoot them. So if they get upstairs and you still, you're still within that 10 second window, you launch a C4 in there, bam, they're dead. Now let's say that it was 10 seconds and they were able to heal. Not only did you stop them from healing with friends with a wounding, but then you blasted them with the shrapnel enhanced C4, making it so that once they actually got their armor broken and their health damaged by the C4, yet for another 10 seconds, they can't heal. So then you run upstairs and you follow up with some shotgun shots. You don't kill him, he still can't heal. So then you're able to push up and just mow this man completely because he could never heal. It doesn't matter how many shields he has, his base health is not coming back. And what happens? Y'all should know by now, a one-way express ticket to the gulag for that man. He ain't coming back no more. Now, obviously as the perks, we did have to change our hard line for overkill, but we're still running shrapnel. Double time to get across that map faster, C4 for the lethal, and a heartbeat sensor for the tactical. Now, for the number one setup, this right here makes no sense. This right here should be illegal. A lot of people are sleeping on this right now. I've only seen about two or three people running this build inside of Warzone, and a couple of my subscribers have run it, and this is now their go-to loadout. So when I tell you that this is overpowered, I'm telling you this is overpowered. So we had the SOCOM Round M4 with the Mono Suppressor, the Corvus Custom Marksman Barrel, the Cronin LP945 Mini Reflex with the SOCOM Rounds, and Frangible Wounding. A lot of people don't understand how strong this combination is. So calm rounds with frangible wounding is the most broken thing that I've ever seen in Warzone. You can three tap somebody's armor, but that's not the case. That that's not even that's not the big deal about this gun. The gun has so much damage when you run so calm rounds that you can two shot somebody to the head once you sit over there and they let's say you hit them in the head, right? Twice. You can get a two shot headshot armor break and then a one shot headshot down or kill depending on if you're in solos or not with frangible wounding let's say you damage their health right that's for 10 seconds like i said with the vok that they cannot heal you're pumping so much damage out with this weapon that when you come and you follow up with the rest of these shots once you finally get into range to hit them they're done and the fire rate is actually so respectable on this weapon that people are not gonna rush you yet it's so fast that if you want to get follow-up shots at range, you can actually do that. I, I've melted people at range so quickly that they did not know what to do. There was a guy running an SKS, and I was running this. Now, a lot of you know that the SKS is a two-shot headshot inside of Warzone. This thing three-tapped him. And it was because of how easy it is to use this thing. This thing is nuts. Now, if you want to, you can make it even better and pair it up with the VOK Rogue. However, since you do need to have an up-close weapon, I opted to go with the Catharsis custom version of the Renegades again, because that way I'm able to run Hardline and Shrapnel, so I can consistently pull up advanced UAVs for the team, beam somebody that I need to beam with, obviously the Desolate custom version of the M4, and then let's say I need to push into that building real quick. C4 at the top of the stairs, damage some health, run in there with the Renegades, bam bam bam, we're done. This is literally the nastiest build inside of Warzone. However, the alternate version running the VOK Rogue is just as disgusting because you can sit there and melt somebody with the M4, flip over to the VOK, and just start mowing people inside of buildings. Like, it's unbelievable, man. So, for the perks, we're running Double Time, Hardline, and Shrapnel, C4 for the Lethal, and a Harpy Sensor for the Tactical. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, hopefully you guys try all these builds, make sure you leave a like, make sure you subscribe if you're not part of the community already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video, take care.